In this tutorial, we're going to step out of Grasshopper for a second, and we're going to look at the logic of L systems and how you could do it in Rhino specifically, because there's a certain way that we want to approach this, um, and it's easier to just try and understand the fundamentals in Rhino and then try and transfer that information into Grasshopper. So what we're going to do is we're going to move away from the um, kind of branching that we created with lines in a tree in Grasshopper and we're going to start working with some solids to create some more um, interesting um, L system outcomes. So what we're going to do is we're going to just learn how to set up the process of an L system in Rhino. Um, so I want you to just kind of follow along with what I'm doing. I'm going to design um, really quickly a kind of component that I'm going to then um, branch and try and create a really simple L system from. So to create my component, I'm going to start with a box. Um, so I'm pretty much going to end with a box. I'm going to make it 20 um, millimeters in width, and then in length I'm going to make it 150 millimeters, and then in height I'm going to make it another 20 millimeters. And I'm just going to turn my shaded mode on like that. Um, I'm also just going to rotate it, oops, uh, I'm going to rotate it in 3D, so use rotate 3D, I've got it saved as R3 as a shortcut, but it's just rotate 3D in the command line, but basically what you do is you rotate around an axis, um, and then you could click and rotate, I'm just going to type in 45, because I know I want to rotate by an angle of 45, I'm just going to move that back to 0, 0. So we've got kind of like a bit of a diamond shaped um, geometry here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another rotate, just a normal one without the 3D. And I'm going to click copy equals yes. I'm going to rotate around this midpoint. And we're going to rotate by another 45 degrees like that. Cool. So we've got this kind of like intersecting shape. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off these shapes. You could also use the Boolean tools to do it, but um, I'm just going to trim off the end. So we've basically got this kind of little cranked um, component. Um, I want to get in there and trim out this bit. And I want to get into here and trim out that bit. So then I can join this as one component like that. Great. Um, so that's the component, it's a pretty simple one, but it'll um, give us a pretty interesting L system, I'm hoping. Um, so what we're going to do is we're essentially going to um, set up a couple of rules. Um, in fact, it's only going to be one rule in this case, but maybe we'll do a demo of a couple of rules as well. I'm going to call this component A. Um, in fact, it's all going to be component A. I'm just going to create a new tab called component B for now. Um, and what we want to do is, in fact, let's create a component B. We're going to actually just create what we basically did before, which is a um, box that is 20 in length and 150, oh sorry, it was 20 in width, 150 in length, and then 20 in height, and we're going to rotate it by 45 degrees like that and I'm going to move it back to zero and then I'm just going to move it to the side over here and this can be component B I'm going to make it a blue color like that what we essentially want to do is create some rules um, for our branching system so the previous rule that we had in our uh, simple tree branching was that we just wanted to orient the original curves we had onto the end of the other curves and we're going to have a pretty simpler, similar rule here basically what I want to do is I want to um, have this component um, go on to the end of I'll rotate it by 45 degrees I want it to go on to the end of this one like that um, maybe I want it to rotate in a different angle, so I'll use rotate 3D, rotate it by 90 degrees maybe, and like that. And then maybe I also want to have, I'll do a rotate 3D, but I'm going to copy, and I'm going to go 90, like that. So these are going to be my kind of new components. I'm just going to change it to... Um, 
I'll just leave it as it is right now. But basically what we can do is we can say that's our starting component. In fact, let's call that base component now. Base component. And we want to put these kind of component A's onto the end and onto the side of these iteratively. So we could just keep trying to figure out the logic and like try and rotate this one over to like copy it over to here and rotate it around and try and get it similar but it'll take us forever and thankfully there's a much more quick and easy way to do this but what we need to do first is we want to set up um, what I'm going to call a um, orient um, what would I call it it's kind of like a little orient um, reference um, and that's going to be in the form of a curve so I'm going to create a polyline and I'm going to make sure the polyline is just going to be on the side of the component here. I'll make it 20 in length and then it's going to kink and I'm going to make it 10 in the other length. So hold down your ortho mode using shift or turn your ortho on down the bottom. And this is going to basically serve as our reference point for whenever we orient something. So now I want to group these two things and this will make sense in a second. Um, I'm going to copy this over here and I'm going to recreate that rule that we just created. So I'll just rotate by 45. And it's copying, which is a little bit annoying, but we can deal with that for now. And then I'm going to rotate um, rotate 3D by 90. And delete the copy, or delete the original. Um, okay, so that's one of the rules. And then the other one I wanted to do was uh, rotate 90, that one. And I'm going to change them to component A. And just pull component B off to the side for a second. So that's basically my rule set. I start with this component and then I'm just doing this over the end of it. So at the end of this one, I want to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to make a copy of this um, out here. This is going to be my actual tree. What I want to do is I want to grab these two um, components and I'm going to use the orient three point command and what we're going to do is it specifies for three points in Rhino so we're going to specify this midpoint the long point and then the short point and then we're going to click copy equals yes and make sure scale equals no is on it doesn't really matter at the moment but just leave that for now and we're going to orient over to here and it's going to copy our geometry based on that orientation and the other place we want to orient to is um, uh, where is it? Uh, it's at the bottom here, quite annoyingly. It's in a bit of a dodgy place. Uh, like that. So now we've got even more um, geometry placed into our um, viewport. And I'm not just trying to figure out if I've done that correctly. Yeah, I should have, because it would actually branch off onto that one. So it's a bit of a dumb L system, because what I'm going to get is I'm going to get all these um, intersecting kind of geometries around here, because we're just going to go around in circles on this component. So that component's going to be a little bit annoying. But you can then go and select all this geometry and do an orient three point onto the end of all of these pieces. So I obviously haven't put my tags in the best position. So what you want to do is try and give your tags as much visibility as possible. But it enables us to quickly go and create um, large um, amounts of geometry um, and essentially create a solid L system. So you start to see how we're getting a similar kind of representation of what we were getting um, in our tree, but now we're actually working with solid geometry. So the other thing we could do is we could set up rules um, where we have two components instead of just one. Um, so what I'm going to do with component B now um, is I am going to give it a little tag. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to copy, no, I'll just create a new one. So I'll go polyline and we want to go 20 in length to get that long one and then 10 in length to get that small one um, and I'm going to group them and maybe we have a rule um, or a new branching system which has the A and the B um, I'll just copy this over here and what's going to happen is whenever we have an A we add 
a B onto the end and I'm going to rotate it by 45 and just move that to here like that and maybe the other rule that we have is we have another A that appears um, on the B somewhere so maybe I could um, rotate that by 45 again and maybe this appears here on the B so our rule is whenever we have an A we create an A and a B kind of on the end and then whenever we have a B we're just going to create an A on the end like this okay and our rule set can start with a B so we start with a B. So what do we want to do first? We want to do uh, this rule, which is that the A goes onto the end of the B because we've got a B at the end. And then we want to do this rule because we've now got an A at the end. And we're going to orient that onto our red tag. Um, and now I've added a kind of red tag on. And of course, I've put my... Um, my thing in another stupid position which is really helpful to us um, but what we could do here is you can start to um, get a bit clever with your rule set and realize that if you cap off the um, B points we could just go and orient this A to the end of this B oops I'm copying instead of orienting a bit silly so if I orient this from here to that B end point. Suddenly I only have A's at the end of my system. So I could go and grab whatever this rule set is. Um, and I could orient this to the end of every single one of those curves. So we've got, I'm going to turn this near off. I'm going to turn a few of these off actually because we just want end points at the moment. switch to wireframe for a second that's what I want that end there and at the end of all the reds we're just going to put these components so obviously the lesson here is to make sure that you put your tags in a place where geometry is not going to overlap them And you can go around and start to create a more complicated system. You could do a three component system. You could do a 100 component system if you wanted. But the idea behind this is to um, use simple rules to create these systems. So in the next tutorial, we're going to try and automate this in Grasshopper. I really recommend that you try and get the hang of doing this in Rhino first so that you understand the logic of moving between different rules. Make sure you're explicit with your rules and you write them down. Um, and then you can create really complicated trees um, of solid geometries.